me, my wife Tori, and the kids, and of course our dog North, have been on a big adventure driving across Canada from our place in northwestern Ontario, which led us all the way to the Stikeen River down the Telegraph Creek Road. And uh, now we're exploring a bit of southern BC. And tomorrow, after a stay in a cozy cabin here at the lodge, we are going to hit up the KVR Trail, which is going to bring us to Kelowna, BC. A bit of a rugged road from what I understand. It's primarily ATV, dirt bike and stuff like that, but uh, nothing that this Chevy Silverado ZR2 can't handle. I want to take a minute to give you a run through of this truck because when it comes to a full size pickup, there are very few, if any, that are this capable when it comes to the off-roading world. And one of the things I want to start with is what's under the hood. This puppy has a 6.2 liter V8 engine and it has all the power we need to pull our off-grid trailer up steep 20% inclines in the backcountry. And this puppy's got 420 horsepower. It's rated at 14 miles per gallon for city driving and 17 miles per gallon on the highway. So this puppy is a four wheel drive four door and it's got five seats. It's powered by a 6.2 liter V8 engine via a 10 speed automatic transmission. Uh, also the exhaust is tucked underneath. A lot of people think a big exhaust looks cool, but when you're off-roading, that's just gonna get smashed up. So that exhaust is hidden, which gives the vehicle that much more clearance. And it just looks freaking sick. It's got a pretty intimidating appearance. It rides on 33 inch tires and features a tricked out suspension, which includes multi-matic spool valve dampers, which are actually derived from Formula One cars and Baja race tracks. So it doesn't get much better than that. I showed you a little bit about the truck and now I want to take a minute to give you a closer look at the Expedition 2.0 by Off Grid Trailer that we've been hauling on this adventure. It comes with a trauma 69 liter fridge slash freezer. Everything is super sturdy, uh, so no problem stepping on it. Walking right up to here on top of the front box. Loving this uh, place to store extra gas, totes with tools in it, strap it all down. This is the kitchen right here for the Expedition 2.0. Got the propane fired stove here sink here with hot water on demand here is the pantry in the back which i love shelves you can move them all around tons of storage to fit all your food um, for a long trip look at this full table slides right out of there just like that super nice to have on hand for a little more counter space while you're cooking or hanging out here we got uh, a 13 pound propane tank. We didn't use the heat much on our cross Canada journey, um, but we used it a little bit. We only burned a half a pound. So between the, the stove and the heater inside, it's really fuel efficient. This puppy is a shower. Look at that. Ah. The other side has a great awning which unzips and is super fast to deploy and it leaves enough space for you to stay out of the rain, cook under it, have a couple chairs under it, still enjoy yourself even in the downpour. Plenty of space in here for two people to sleep comfortable. Tori and both kids typically sleep in here. The realities of this thing is we got a lot, we store some gear in here as we're moving. One of the things I love is look at that storage space unbelievable amount of storage space and the expedition 2.0 in comparison to the pando 2.0 has a lot more storage space on the inside because the rear pantry doesn't take up as much room as the kitchen which is oriented on the back of the 2.0 and that gives the expedition 2.0 a lot more storage space on the inside which is great this puppy's got a vent as well on top of the propane heat so you can actually get a nice dry sleep in here have it nice and hot by sinking the vent with the propane heater and condensation won't build up when you do it right really cool and essentially off-grid trailers will give you what you want you can start bare bones or you can get a lot of different features we we love this thing and it can handle a lot more sheer off-roading than what you've seen us do on the Cassier Highway 37A. Even this road to Kelowna and the Telegraph Creek Road which are all exciting but this puppy can go over some big boulders and you can get into some remote locations so I think it's a great family trailer as well but this puppy can also get you into some remote locations so loving the Expedition 2.0 by Off Grid Trailers.
Well, here we are in the cabin. It was a rainy morning with a really cool mist and low clouds this morning. And we are just packing up to check out of our cabin here at Shoot Lake Lodge, a beautiful, beautiful place. And we'll be jumping on the KVR trail to Kelowna today with our Chevy Silverado ZR2, hauling our Expedition 2.0 off-road teardrop trailer by Off Grid Trailers. Really looking forward to it. Rainy day, hopefully that hasn't uh, affected the road made it more washed out and hopefully some of those low clouds and mist clear up a bit so we can enjoy the views. Huddy's having a little bit of a run around. We're just getting everything packed up here at this cabin and looking forward to uh, getting on the trail. When you ask for directions to Kelowna, it takes you because this isn't really a recognized road, the route we're Mommy. taking. So we're like going this way and then Mama. it cuts up here and connects with Kelowna. Buddy, are you sleepy? Shoes. What about you, Wes? Move your shoes off. You ready? So we're starting out on the KVR trail. The navigator wants to take us back down through Penticton and all up along the uh, west side of Lake Okanagan to Kelowna, but we are taking the shortcut. It shouldn't be too crazy uh, uphills and downhills as at least this part of the KVR trail is an old rail line, but uh, you know, the rail lines have been pulled up. So that generally means that it's pretty flat because trains can't go up really steep inclines. But we've heard from a lot of people that it's quite Quite bumpy so there's gonna be some boulders and things like that uh, so anyways we're excited I don't think it's gonna be um, as intense as the Telegraph Creek Road however it's gonna be bumpier so we're just gonna be taking her slow uh, and enjoying the journey on a wonderful shortcut that may not be so short in the end yeah it might be longer <laughs> might well be. this says an hour 40 if we went around so I'm curious it says arrival 12 12 40 so I'm curious to see what time we get there and you know yeah. Even if we get there at 1240, then it doesn't matter. It's already pretty bumpy. Well, I left Chattanooga, boy, had a dollar and a dime. I hit it out from Nashville on the hard rock line. I'm working on that old steamboat and learn to ride the steam. When my feet had touched dry land, how happy I did feel. Saving every penny for to make up through the fall. Working for that dog, but it never adds up at all. It's got a huge rattle. Yo, it's a huge rattlesnake. Oh my god. Well, we are driving through a bit of a cloud here, which is cool, but uh, it just seems that the trail drops off into an abyss. Uh, so it's obstructing some of the views, although it kind of has a, it's kind of given a neat feeling though. Just stopping to grab a little snack here. Beautiful view over the valley. Of course, uh, it's a bit weathered in right now, but uh, pretty neat. Looks like just an abyss behind me. But nice fireplace here. Should be in Kelowna not too, too long, but I think we're about halfway right now. Lots of fun exploring some uh, new trails.
Cool bike. Well, I've been brown long enough to know that there are some things you can't take back. Some things you just got to let go. Well, there's some things you can't take back. Lord, some things you just got to let go. So we've come off. Uh... I guess we've come off the KVR trail. We've come off the part of the trail that was an old uh, railway bed. And uh, we're on a logging road, so a lot more ups and downs and still bumpy, but uh, manageable and just a great way to access some beautiful views here. So um, we're having a lot of fun. And thinking about it now, it'd be pretty neat to actually spend a night. There's a few places you can pull off, get right into the bush, camp out and stuff like that, have a beautiful view. Um, would have been nice to uh, spend the night along this trail, which it seems like a fair amount of people do, but uh, definitely the most fun way to get from Penticton to Kelowna. What do you think, honey? Is this fun? Truck. Truck. <laughs> not truck. No, not truck. The truck no. Yes. He did say truck there, right? That was the truck. Okay, good, because it sounded like he said something else. It did sound like he said something else. I just put it into tow haul because we're going down some steep hills. So instead of switching gears like myself, it's doing it for me. So it's good. I just don't want to ride the brakes the whole way down, you know? Another neat feature the uh, ZR2 has is something called terrain mode as well. Using the uh, ABS brakes and of course the accelerator, it'll help you crawl up sections of big steep rock and the vehicle's computer will sense what wheel it's going to give power to pretty freaking cool is Kelowna right on beautiful Lake Okanagan wow what a cool sight coming down off the mountains on the Gallard logging road here pretty cool I'm super glad we decided to take this route yeah, look at that 1235 still took us an hour 40 but I mean we also stopped to film a lot so probably wouldn't have taken us that long and I would say it wasn't as bumpy as we thought it was gonna be hey like I thought we'd be crawling up some big boulders and stuff, but nothing like that. Well, here we are in beautiful Kelowna, BC on the KVR trail. Great way to get to Penticton from Kelowna. More exciting than uh, around the other side of Okanagan on the paved highway. So all in, we're really glad that we got an opportunity to check out the KVR trail and uh, put our Chevy Silverado ZR2 and our Expedition 2.0 off-road teardrop by off-grid trailers to the test once again. Lots of fun. Well, they say all good things come to an end and unfortunately our latest adventure is coming to an end. We spent some time at Chute Lake Lodge in a really cool 106 year old log cabin. And after that, we took the KVR trail to Kelowna and started heading home from there, traveling through the Rockies, which was very beautiful. Traveled through Yoho National Park, spent some time in Banff. We even went up the gondola with the kids, which was fun. I even bought the t-shirt. And now 
now we have just pretty much traveled through the prairies. We're heading back to Ontario. Saw probably about 20 antelope. The antelope migrate up through the state. We drove through the Cypress Hills, which is in uh, Alberta and Saskatchewan. Really beautiful rolling prairie. That's where Sitting Bull came up from Dakota Territory. After he was had a hand in pretty much wiping out the 7th Cavalry on Custer's last stand. And now we're just on our way home. All in, amazing. Uh, our canoe trip down the Stikeen was very special. Definitely some type 2 fun because we got unlucky with the amount of rain we had. Consistent rain, night and day. Uh, very challenging to stay dry. Well, you just don't stay dry. Cold headwinds every day. Challenging to keep the kids dry. But you know, they were absolute champs out there. And now looking back on it, despite the flooding and the windstorms and all the things that happened that were out of our control, it's starting to feel like definitely was character building. And both Tori and I are really proud of just what troopers the kids are. I mean, these kids are as tough as nails. Never did they really complain or seem too bothered by the wet, cold weather, which is amazing. At the end of the day, it was a very, very beautiful, incredibly beautiful river going in to see Great Glacier. The overlanding adventure has been amazing, and particularly the kind of true overlanding routes we did. And the Telegraph Creek Road was just crazy awesome and scary probably to a lot of people. Heading down 37A off the Cassier Highway, seeing Bear Glacier, driving through those canyons, all incredible. Driving through, of course, Yoho and the Rockies is spectacular. And uh, we're gonna take about three more days to get home, heading back across the North Shore of Lake Superior. We got a beautiful warm autumn day here, but ultimately this trip is wrapping up and we will have been on the road for about 34 days total. We're home. Well, that's all she wrote, folks. We are home. I'm exhausted. <laughs> we got sick. <laughs> We're both sick now. We I both think. got the flu. Did you have a good trip? I, I did. I did have a good trip. <laughs>